Greetings! Welcome back to Pink Oddbird. Today I'm here to do a flip through of these two books, so let's go ahead and get started. So you might be wondering why are these two books here because they're completely different and contrasting. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. They do contrast and that is because I've been having this idea for a while to do kind of like a few little sets of books that have juxtaposition. So this particular one is dreams and this one is nightmares. So I wanted to make two books that kind of go within the same theme, but they have like a juxtaposition to them. So this one is light, this one is dark. And so I'm going to do a flip through of both of these and let's go ahead and oh, let's start with this one. So this is the book called dreams and as you can see, I wanted it to be really sparkly and dreamy and most of the contents of this book is going to be surreal. So there's no real like rhyme or reason. Um, as you know, when you do have dreams, uh, regular dreams, there's really nothing like standoutish about them other than sometimes they might be really weird. <laughs> and so I thought this would be a neat way to kind of capture those. So the book is nine by six with a just shy of three inch spine. Um, as you can see, I have a flower here that's on the spine. The fabric is like this sparkly blue lace and underneath it is vintage music paper. And on the front, I just did a collage. I've had this little piece forever. I actually picked this piece up just just like this at a yard sale and I was like well I want to keep it because I never know what I might use it for so <laughs> it kind of fit for this theme for this book for me because it seems really cute really airy and dreamy and so I just did a fabric collage underneath that and then I've just kind of glued down a bunch of different like uh beads and trinkets and things like that and, and then there's some fibers underneath that as well. For the closure I just randomly stitched together a white and a turquoise seam binding so again I wanted this to be like something that you wouldn't like naturally kind of think of so well, nothing is really going to make sense and I wanted to make it that way because sometimes your dreams don't make sense I know I've already said that but oh and this book in particular is a hollow back so as you can see here there it is and so it'll lay completely flat um, when you're using this one so in the front, I left the front cover plain just because I like this little journaling spot here. If you wanted to, you could add a pocket up here at the top. There is a little Ex Libris here at the front. And as you can see, it's this cute little girl reading a book and it's plain on the back. Up at the top here, I have added in a little feather charm. If you can see that. And then there's just a little piece of ephemera here. And then I did do a lot of coffee staining for this book. So I have some coffee stained index cards that I left plain thinking you can write your dreams on those and the same for tags. A lot of blue and beige tags in this book. I wanted to leave you different variations of space that you can write your dreams in. Sometimes you might have to write like a whole page about a dream. Sometimes you might only have like a card worth or like a little space worth, anything like that, or even just a little tags worth. Cause sometimes we can't remember our, our full dreams, right? <laughs> so here on this side, this book page, it was actually one, one full book page. And I thought it was kind of perfect because it, each page on either side kind of fit for both of these journals. So this is the page that I picked for this book and it says, what would you do if you saw a fairy? And it has really cute imagery there. And then we have this cute fairy lady on the back side. So that tucks into a lace pocket. I have printed uh, most of these uh, images on very heavy, sturdy um, copy paper. I did do a little bit of stamping and there's a fabric flip up there with the same fabric from the cover. So the digital kit that I have used in this one 
comes from Release the Crafton. She has a brand new series, uh, or I guess I should say maybe a few sets of brand new digital kits that she has made. So if you are into kind of like the more alternative themes, you can find some neat digital kits on her Etsy shop and I will link her below. So this is her Moonlight kit and I thought it was so perfect because, you know, when you go to sleep, it's usually nighttime and under the moonlight. <laughs> so I have a little fabric here. This is one of my corner huggers that you have seen me make in a video prior. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it down below. And then in this book, I have some really sweet looking dolls. This is a little guest, <laughs> a guest page, but I thought that would be kind of funny because maybe you had some special guests in your dreams because I don't know about you guys but that happens to me. Some more space for writing, a jumbo playing card and a lace belly band. There's a little moon guy. A little book page. This is a little belly band and then it has a pocket here and then there's a little skinny pocket here that you can tuck something in as well. This vintage music paper, a little collage this is uh, the center of the first signature. That is from the kit. I did do some random handwriting little bits. And this one is, it says surreal. This is a little mermaid napkin. And it says dare to dream. And then I have tucked in one of my super special little handmade papers that I picked up from the mushroom market. So this is like an ice cream cone shaped little piece of ephemera, but the eyes looked crazy. So I put them on there and then this is just a little collage. This is like, it's tool, but you can't see it, but it's like one big tool embroidered piece. And I just stitched that to the book page to make a pocket little sticker, another belly band here. And this is a, just a file folder, but I've coffee stained it. And I like the, the grid on here so you can do some, some journaling, a little stamp ephemera that says fly. So here on this side, there's a little envelope here with a little heart paper clip. There's some more of the kit and just a little tag that tucks behind the envelope. The other side of the guest paper. This is a little tuck spot here. This is a vintage postcard, but I thought this little animal was really sweet. Kangaroo here. And on the back, it tells you what it is. Kangaroo and Jero Jerboa, I believe. And so this is what the back looks like. They're from 1996. Little flip out with a little bit of punching and another tuck spot in here that says Carpe Diem. I did a couple of these little collaged little bits so you can keep these as they are and do some little blurb writing on the back but um, I just did a collage of different things on here there are a f there are a few charms on this book and you've already seen the feather but there's a few here that you can see and I've done them mostly in blues purples and turquoises and there's a clear one as well so here is one couple of Project Life cards. This is something vintage that I found at the Goodwills. A couple of little bunnies, but they come from a, a library, I believe. Yeah, the Northridge Branch Library in Northridge, California. But I thought these were kind of fun. And so I just did a little bit of washi there. And then there's a little tuck spot down here with some ephemera. Found this little strawberry shortcake um, as well. A big little, a big little, <laughs> a little bit of fabric collaging here, but um, a button. And then there are some animals and things. There's a couple more little ephemera cards. This kit is so pretty. This is a fabric piece and it has like vegetables on it. So I thought that was kind of fun and random. And then I have a big piece of stationery here that's got money on it because, you know, maybe you dream 
Maybe you dream that you won the lottery. There's another <laughs> charm. And these, there are four of these little um, uh, journaling cards that come with the kit. And in this book, I backed these ones on coffee stained paper and I just stitched around them. So really pretty. This little notepad paper is so cute and it just flips up and then I have a nice little bit of fringy trim here on the edge. Another collage down there. Here's the center of the second signature, but it's really pretty. It's got the moon and the raven and like a mirror and a key. This paper, I just put a little sample of it in there because it feels so neat. I found this also at the Goodwill, but I thought maybe you could use this to do some collaging in your book. There's some more moon paper. A couple of tags in here, and I just pretty much added um, eyelash trim to all of the tags. There's another one of those collaged book pages, a puzzle piece, because sometimes when you wake up, you're trying to put the pieces of the puzzle of your dream together because it didn't make any sense. <laughs> There's the other piece of the fabric. There's a little um, wild rumpus. Thought that was really cute and surreal looking because it's like surreal looking. <laughs> and then I found these super cool um, index cards at the Goodwill as well. Some more washi, some more animals, the snake skin on that side little book page, another one of those journaling cards from the kit, and it is hooked into a paper clip with a charm. Put a little vintage corn card in here because, again, I was just trying to keep it really random. <laughs> so back here we have a vintage book page, and I was so mad because I kind of cut this piece off but it said bedtime and then there's a little poem here and this side says hippity hop to bed and let's go to bed and then there's a tag in here and then I just tucked a little feather away in there and a doily so the third signature these postcards are so cool because they look absolutely so surreal, but I'm just going to hold it here so you can take a look at it for a second and just kind of make out all the different little pieces. Like I'm going to tell you that this one is from winter. And so basically all of the components that are going to make up this man are from winter. So there's like lemons, there's walnuts, tree trunks, tree branches. Um, it's really super cool. There's one of my library card uh, stationaries and a tag. This is Tim Holtz wallpaper. Some more of that fabric from the cover. A little owl. The elephant and the bad baby. And that's what this side looks like. This is a bag, so you could tuck something into it. And I was going to, but it kind of opened when I coffee stained it. So I thought that it would be neat, like if you had a a dream that you know you wanted to kind of conceal away you could write it in here and then glue it down or paper clip it it's a tuck spot behind it as well so you can put something in here or you can tuck something back here as well and then my little piece of washi down here says live and dream well I guess the M is missing but that's from the last time I tore that <laughs> And these super cool little bits came from Dolly. She coffee stained these, but I love the way they kind of open and they're almost kind of like a little booklet. It says the shoe box on the front, but you can do some writing in here. And then I have a little paint chip down here, Winter Splash and Soothing Ocean. Some star paper. And up here is a tuck spot in this little bit of lace. There's another one of those pretty journaling cards. And then I have another vintage book page from the Children's Garden of Verses. And that's what this side looks like. It says the wind. And then on this side, it's my bed is a boat from a, from a railway carriage and the moon, which I absolutely love.
Down here I wrote fantasy. This one says wish list. There's a couple bits of ephemera in that pocket and same here as well. This is another tuck spot. Here's this side. In this little envelope that I copy stained, there's some Tim Holtz, um, a couple little Tim Holtz ransom letters. So here's another one of those collaged pieces that I made, and this is just a, a vintage doily. And then tucked in there is just a little tag. And then same thing on the back, it's plain for some journaling. There's a big uh, coffee stained index card here and a little elephant ephemera. There's a little checklist here. There's another collaged bit. There's a clear charm. And back here, uh, these are vintage book pages as well. So in here we have a little birdhouse tag, a pretty napkin that matches with the colors in this book, and then I found some cool tarot cards at the Goodwill. This one is the Wheel of Fortune. There's a little tuck spot here. Another journaling card. There's a little bit of fabric. Children's writing paper. More ephemera here. And I put a little Christmas card in there and a little postcard. And then there's a little a ducky that I coffee stained. This is a seed packet that I coffee stained and another one of those wild rumpus cards. This book page, While You're Asleep, and then down here I wrote Daydream. Some more of that fabric. It's cute little mouses. <laughs> the field mouse. Another coffee stained index card. There's an, a little bias tape um, up here you can write in. There's a little charm that has a bird on it, and then some more ephemera, and then another envelope. The recipe cards. A couple of tags in here. This is a book page you can flip out and do some writing underneath it. And a little map page, another piece that I stitched on there. And then in each of the books, I originally wrote out a couple of stories for the books, but then I thought it would be kind of neat if I wrote down a couple of dreams that I have had before. So each of the books is going to have a dream of mine that I've had before in the past. So um, I won't read it here, but whoever gets these books will be able to, to, to read those. And then there's my stamp. So, yeah, this one is dreams. Oh, I forgot to mention I used my Primo waxes from Janine on that wood chip. They came out so perfect. All right, so let's take a look at nightmares. All right, so here we are going to look at nightmares now. And you'll obviously notice that it is instantly much darker than the former. So this cover, the size is the same, nine by six with just shy of a three inch spine. And this book is completely covered in a beautiful black velvet. And I have the darker flower on the spine of this one. And for the cover of this one, I have used a vintage painting that's actually called The Nightmare. And you can't really see all the details here, but I picked it for that reason because sometimes when you're dreaming your everything isn't crystal clear it's kind of foggy it's kind of hard to see but there's a, the horse back here and the guy that's sitting on the lady here while she's sleeping and then I've just done this little metal piece down here because I thought it could look like a sort of like a neat little um, metal dream catcher 
So, uh, let's see. I'll just I'll leave that for now. The closure on this book isn't removable. It's attached to the book, and it's just some really cool um, black ribbon that I have just attached to either side. Uh, this one is not a hollow bound, a hollow spine, but it still it still lays pretty flat, even though the both of these books are pretty full. Okay, so just to start, this is a clear. A more, a more clear visual of the image on the cover and I did that intentionally so you'd be able to see more of the details just in case you wanted to and like I said that painting is called the nightmare and here's the ex libris for this book and then I've used some of the Tim Holtz people just did a little collage on the pocket here with some textiles I've used Prima paper in this book in the front pocket, we do have some anatomy type imagery. Um, there are obviously different images in this book. So if you're not interested in seeing, you know, that kind of stuff, then I understand. We'll see you on the next video. <laughs> but I have these cool napkins with the skulls. So again, I just copy stained some paper. There's some purple tool. There's a little uh, tag tucked into this little golden pocket here. So I've used another one of Priscilla's kits for this book. And this kit is called Black Magic Woman. And it's got lots of fun like reds and purples and blacks. And so I definitely wanted to use that for this book. As you can see, I've carried that theme throughout. Again, I will link to these kits in her shop. I have a big lace pocket here. There's the vintage page for for this book. Just some random little um, stick-ons there. This book, I have spelled out the word nightmare, and most of the letters look like this except for the A and the G. So as you flip through the book, whenever you see these letters, it'll be like N, and then we'll get to I, G, H, T. It spells out nightmare throughout the whole book. So here's a little collaged piece that I've used. I have a little envelope paper clip and then a little book page envelope here. I just have stitched some stitched some bits onto it and then a little graphic 45 piece of ephemera. A little bit of space fabric in here just to <laughs> keep it out of this world. So there's a little heart there. A little crystal ball. Here's the eye. So uh, on this, on in this book, I left the pages printed out on the heavy, heavier copy paper that I have. So this is one of the journaling cards that comes with the kit. There's a vintage stamp here, and there's a little Tim Holtz charm that says "found." There's another little piece, and this one is uh, they're looking at a ghost, basically. There's the center of the signature, but so pretty. <laughs> There's the G, and over here it says horror. There's a tag, and the tags um, in this book, I've used this cool like black trim, and it looks like eyelashes. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of fun and creepy. Another feather as well. There's a paint chip here, another one of those file folders, and another one of the journaling cards. Uh, fabric tabs. Here's the H. In this book, the book pages with the dolls, they are a little bit more shook. <laughs> and a little vintage stamp there as well. There's the jumbo playing card. There's a tuck spot here with this little doll. There's another tag. And then here's the vintage postcard for this book. He looked a little bit more scary than the kangaroo, so I put him in here. And this one is a long-tailed pen golan. So that's the end of the first signature. And the second signature, we have another tag, and then the children's 
Garden of Verses pages. These are old, so you have to be careful with the folding on these, but this one is called Fairy Bread, and that's what that looks like. And then on the back we have Night and Day. Up here we have some more Tim Holtz people. There's a little tag that I tucked in and some journaling space. I did the same type of collage pieces for this book. There are a couple of charms as well. This one is purple. There's the seed packet. This is pretty images from the kit. This book page is for the, the Nightingale. I did a little collage here. Some Tim Holtz people. And we have a Spotted Dumb Cane vintage card. Some more Tim Holtz wallpaper and lace. This one is called uh, A Ghost Story. And then the tarot card for this book is The Tower. Beautiful. Down here I wrote Phantasm. So there's a an old lasagna casserole recipe in this book, but I really liked it because the colors kind of matched with the book. <laughs> so pretty little raven. And there's the shoe box, little, little foldy thingy. And there's one of the journaling cards, little index card. This is the like surreal postcard for this book. And this one is for the cook. And so as you can see, I'll hold it still, but if you can make it out, he's wearing a hat. There's a lemon. This is like his collar. There's like a turkey or something for his nose. <laughs> and there's a pig there. So that's the vintage postcard on here. And then I put the pork chop recipe with that. <laughs> I know, I know. So a vintage post, a uh, vintage stamp. There's the tea. Some black lace there. Really pretty image there. There's some fabric here. And just a little coffee stained little tag. And then another one of those surgical Im imageries. And they're backed on heavy cardstock so you can write on those with like gel pen. So here we have this cat looked kind of mean and scary. So that's why I picked him for this book. Old Cat Care Outside the Cottage. And then on this side, inscription for an old bed. <laughs> and we have this little skeleton as well. Little skull down here. There's a faint raven there. I don't know if you can see that. I have a tree here. And then this page, it looks like they're all like rampaging towards someone. And this guy's got like a cleaver and he's got a banana. <laughs> but they're angry. Vintage music paper. Um, this book page was kind of cool. He's like a crazy looking octopus. It's um, It's those like dolls that you can flip upside down and they come become two different kinds of dolls. So some more from the kit. There's the notepad paper. Here's the M. We have this little creepy clown dude here. And then there's a little Tim Holtz spider on this uh, paper clip. And some Tim Holtz ransom letters for this book as well. And then back here we have a skull bag and then um, probably B Black Phillip if I, if I know Priscilla, <laughs> but it's a goat. <laughs> Here I wrote illusion. It doesn't even look like illusion, but that's the whole point, right? <laughs> so in the center of the book, I have used this page because it's just like a great big old bat. And we have some Tim Holtz people down here. 
vintage steno paper. And then for the wild rumpus cards in this book, I picked some characters that looked a little bit more scary. <laughs> this is a cool fabric pocket there. A bunch of potion bottles. Little Miss Muffet and the spider. So that's what you have here. Now I tore this page, but I just stitched it back together. And then here we have a succubus. Um, you can see her feathers back here, and then these are her legs, and there's the dude that she's come to visit. So another, you can tuck something under there. This is the last signature. They both have four signatures, approximately 125-ish mm, pages per book. <clears throat> so this is just like a vintage, like, transparency thing, and then a, just a plain tag. And then I have tucked those into this really, really cool um, owl fabric pocket. And then I have the owl over here on the other side. She's putting him to sleep. Slumber Song is on the back of that book page. Here's the A. Little Tim Holtz clip. And then this is a, a real vintage calling card. It says Emma A. Mountfort. Wouldn't that be scary if you got a dream, if you had a, a nightmare and you got left a calling card? Ooh. <laughs> so there's my raven. So here, this flips open. And then this is the other side of that fairy page that I was telling you about before. So here is the make a fairy garden on this side. And then on this side, it has, if you recognize, this is the the other side of that other page and then over here you have this fairy who looks a little scary and it says remember you cannot always trust a fairy okay so we have a little elephant dude here there is a black circle punch out that I punched out of a page uh, in this book and then the birdhouse tag the story of Persephone is in here <laughs> And here we have um, Hobgoblin is what that says. There's the center of that signature. Great big heart with a scorpion. One of my favorites. There's the R. There's the library card stationery. Some fabric washi. We're getting towards the end. I know this video is long. I'm sorry. Here's another one of those little collage bits and I've used this sequins fabric that I have and it's got like a crazy like flower right here and then you can tuck something in here. I don't have anything in there but you can write, you know, write something in there and tuck it away. There's another charm. There's the ducky, some more fabric. Here's the book page that opens up and there, that one has like a little grid index card and then same thing with the belly band and here we have some more Tim Holtz people and animals in there this is where I, where I cut that circle out from it kind of frames them in a half moon <laughs> there's some sheep here drowsy sheep cradle song life is a circus and then again there is my stamp book page flips out and in this book, the little vintage library piece is of goats, but I thought that was perfect because of the goat that comes along with this kit, goat and kid. And then again, with the owls and their stern gazes. <laughs> and here is the E. And then I just stitched this little piece on as well. So in the back of the book, I'm going to unhook that little uh, Tim Holtz clippy thing. I put this, it, uh, it's elderberry, and I thought that it would be kind of neat because maybe, um, sometimes, you know, when you have a dream, you can't tell when you wake up if it was a dream or if it was something that happened in real life. Maybe that's just me, but, um, I put this sample in here because maybe it was collected from a dream and it was the night from the forest 
that would be the dream that the person had and they picked up some elderberry and I just put that inside of here just makes like a cool little shaker and then uh, same thing in this book I wrote down one of my I guess nightmares that I had so whoever gets this book will get to read that another Tim Holtz person and then this book um, comes with a charm so on the charm it looks like this and there's just a bunch of different little bits there's a little skull there there's a jumbo heart there are a couple of charms that I made there's another one and then uh, this little like uh, spike so that hangs on to the back of the book and um, it's clipped onto here with this little clasp hook that I attached and that is it my friends I know this video was long and I apologize but because it's um, kind of like a pair I wanted to do this video together so I hope you have enjoyed my ter interpretation of these light and dark dream and nightmare books I do have a few more ideas in mind that I will do over time with different themes but it will have the same idea of this uh, juxtaposition so both of these jumbo rumbos <laughs> are going to be listed up in my Etsy shop uh, until until they're not anymore so <laughs> Um, all of the information is going to be listed down in the description box below and I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer because it's already been so long and I appreciate you guys all hanging out here with me for a bit. I do have some cool um, fun things in mind that we can hopefully come back pretty soon and work on together. I have a couple more videos that I need to get up before we can start doing that though. So that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is headed into. And until next time, toodaloo.